Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Decided to do a little walk and talk and give a little bit of an update. I'm gonna be switching hands and everything. I'm tired. Yeah, been catching up a lot of work and I might talk about the work a little bit, but my first thing is a prayer request. Two prayer requests that are very important to me. And one is for Victoria. I don't know if you see her up there, but she's up there waiting for me. Had to take her in to the uh, animal clinic, the animal hospital. Uh, she had a growth on her cheek right below her eye and uh, they cleaned it up and everything and I went ahead and did a full, you know, checkup. She's 13, 14 years old, going 14 years old, getting old. I did a checkup on her. She's got some arthritis in her back, but the biggest thing was her teeth. Okay. I've had her teeth pulled uh, two separate times had teeth going bad, but this time a lot of the teeth are going bad and they're going to have to go in there and, and they might end up pulling all her teeth. And uh, so I need prayer for that. For I know she's a pet. She's not. She's a blessing from the Lord. She's not a necessity where you have to have, but being out here all alone, she's been a very big blessing. And um, so uh, to the brethren that I've been helping out and donating to um, this month. I might have to hold off. So uh, let me know if it's a serious thing where you desperately need the donations. Um, if not, uh, I just need to do my books because this is going to cost some money to get her teeth pulled and everything. And as they say, you know, I was going to say the money doesn't grow on trees. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it does. You just print it out all you want. Print all you want. But, um... But that's my first prayer. So when I went in there and they started pointing this stuff out, I started being like, oh, does this mean that, you know, the Lord's going to end up taking Victoria from me and it's time, you know? Because I know the time's coming. You know, the Lord's been kind of preparing me and I talk with the Lord about it. And like I said, I understand she's a pet, but when you're out here all alone and she's, we go for walks together every morning and I talk with the Lord and she's just basically in every aspect of my life um, because that's what a pet, a dog is. And uh, so it's going to be hard losing her, but the Lord takes her, the Lord takes her. Uh, so that's a big prayer. Um, so please pray for Victoria and for me, what hap whatever God chooses, what happens to Victoria, uh, that, uh, you know, pray for me through all of this. Uh, the second thing is, is that um, my absence, I haven't really done a video, a walk and talk video about my absence. And uh, first was sick. I remember putting that, I typed it in there. I couldn't even, I, it, when I typed in that I was sick, I was already bedridden for almost two weeks. So when I was telling people I need prayer, I couldn't even get up to uh, ask for prayer. I signed up for a Fishman's Association, and what it does is it allows me to keep up to date with all the laws around here, and it allows me to volunteer to go out in the forest, the, the picture that I showed before, the mountainside and everything, and I'll try to do another one up here. Um, it allows me to go out to the rivers and find out the different locations and good spots to go fishing and everything. Uh, I've been learning to fish for food and hunt for food and grow my own food, which I really, really try to express that especially come next year, something big is going to be start happening next year, um, that you really need to get into growing your own food and fishing and hunting. Uh, for those of you that keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off, you know who you are. Uh, you really need to get into it. Um, I mean, I, I, we could get caught up um, in a few months. We could get caught up next week. We get caught up next year. Or we might end up going through some hard times, like really, really, really hard times before we get caught up. But I signed up for the association and I got an email saying, hey, we're going to go tuna fishing. And I've always wanted to go tuna fishing. I love tuna and I wanted to have my own tuna, healthy tuna. I usually buy it from the uh, farmer's market, but it's expensive. So uh, the trip that I paid for, I was told I was going to get tons of tuna, and I did, versus, and the money I paid was uh, about half of what I would have paid for the tuna at the farmer's market. Plus, I'd get the experience of what it takes to tuna fish and everything. And it's out on the ocean. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, tuna fishing, out on the ocean. So we went out on the ocean, and I got very seasick. And I think part of that seasickness was I kept smelling the diesel from the diesel motor of the big boat. And it was just, it was bad. And I got really seasick and got home and just basically passed out. 
tried to get up and do some work for a few days, but then a few days later, I was it just hit me hard. So my body was already in a very weakened state when I got sick. And it wasn't the COVID-19 virus. It's never been isolated. You can't prove it's the virus. I got the flu. But because I was already in a really weakened uh, state, it just hit me really hard. So I was bedridden for weeks. And I had brethren praying for me. And I thank you for your prayers, brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you. Thank you. We desperately need your prayers. Everybody does. All the brethren need your prayers. But me, I'm, I love the prayers. Thank you for your prayers. Through all that, God got me back up. I lost a lot of weight. I went weeks without eating because I just couldn't eat. You know, I, those that are weak eat herbs. Romans 14, uh, verses 1 through 4. It's not a choice. I didn't have a choice. If I had a choice, I'd have gotten up and ate meat. <laughs> but I couldn't even get soup down. Just broth. I mean, that's how bad it was. So, you know, they that are weak eat herbs. You know, that's the best example of that. It's not a choice thing. I know that's just me poking at somebody. It's not a choice thing. You don't have a choice when you're weak. I didn't have a choice. But God got me over it, and I thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Jesus Christ, for your prayers. The other thing I've been dealing with in the last couple months is uh, my daughter has had operation, and I didn't know about it until right after she had the operation. They kept it from me on her mom's side. You know, I watched. I remember watching Sheffy. I can do some pictures of the background there, the hillside. I remember watching Sheffy, and one of the things he said for the young lady there that had a child outside of wedlock, that he said that though we have to bear the burdens, the scars of our sins, uh, God will forgive us of our sins, but we still have to bear the scars sometimes of our sins. Our, our lost life, where we were making mistakes left and right, sometimes it'll come back on you as a Christian. Okay? How many times did uh, Paul, did someone look at him and go, who are you to talk to me? You used to kill Christians. How many times did that come back on them? Okay. Our sins sometimes will hunt us down. <laughs> and the scars, you know, we have to live with the scars. So I made some mistakes in my past. And I have a daughter. And she's, uh, the daughter part's not, is a blessing. Was, let's see if I can get back to where you can see me. But I didn't know she was going for surgery. So she had some major surgery. I'm not going to say exactly what it is because she has her privacy. But her life is different now. And... Through all of that, her mom, on her mom's side, was turning her against me and saying lies about me and evil things about me. And then she would quote those same evil things and to the point of, I hate you and I don't want anything to do with you and everything. And it was a tough struggle for me. It just pierced to the heart. Um, it doesn't matter. You know, when you're a father or a mother and your child starts saying evil and wicked things and just piercing you through the heart. It still hurts. No matter how much you say, well, I'm done with you. I've washed my hands of you. It still hurts. Well, come to find out, it's, and I can't go into details, but it wasn't safe for her and her sister to stay there with her mom and stepdad. So now she's living at her grandma's. Needless to say, she's talking to me again. And uh, she's coming over. She came over to visit once. And we were able to sit down and talk and she was calmed down and she wasn't, you know, that whole thing about it, it doesn't work that way. But, you know, devil yelling in one ear and angel yelling. She didn't have those people influencing her. And we were able to sit down and talk. And um, I was able to set some things straight and let her know that, uh, you know, I'd have been there for you, but I was, wasn't allowed to be. So I had to deal with that for a while. And financially, you know, I want money, but I don't want you. I want money, but I don't want you. You know, kind of like, you know, I almost want to slip up and say something that's poking at somebody. But, you know, when people want money, but they don't want to do, you know, have that love and that respect for the people that they're asking for money from, you know, it was hard. Like I said, I just went through some hard times. It kind of got in the way of me being effective in the ministry and... I kind of died down a little bit, but another one of the reasons why I, I kind of backed off in ministry. I remember I've always said I'm only part time, and that's not an excuse. But I'm just saying I'm part time. When you're putting out a Bible study, I'm learning now being in ministry, doing Bible studies, doing Bible videos, putting them together, and everything. It doesn't take 40 to 50 hours a week to do that. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It just doesn't. It's part time. So I'm part time. I always tell people I'm not full time. I don't ask for money or donations. Um, 
I'm just, this way seems to be the one that lights, that's not dark. Um, oops, got dark. I'm not the one, I don't, that's why I don't ask for donations. God's provided for me, and I'm just part-time. So, uh, it's just, it was hard going through that and struggling with that, and it kind of got in the way, but the, one of the other things, I was getting to it, one of the other things that got in the way is uh, a brother in Christ who I love, who I respect, and who's like a mentor. Not like, he's a mentor. You know, I'll, I'll almost everything I've learned from the Bible, how to read the Bible, how to study the Bible, word studies, subject studies, expository studies, uh, uh, context get the context you're supposed to compare scripture with scripture all the major doctrines I, I learned it from him and the moment I disagree with him on something he went off on me and told me that I don't have his permission and his authority to be preaching and teaching his pride got the better of him and he really went off on me um, over a disagreement and that disagreement uh, was um, Christmas and uh, liberty when it applies as it applies to Christmas. Let's get that down. All right. He so uh, if you actually look at our studies on liberty, uh, like I said I'm not going to just try to call him out, but some of you might know who he is. But when it comes to liberty, and you look at his studies and you look at my studies, we seem to be right on until he brings Christmas into it. Then he makes a mess of liberty. And I keep, and we just had a disagreement, and then instead of coming to me and talking to me like a brother in Christ, you know, a loving brother in Christ, he decided to tell me that I need to take time off in the ministry. I need to take time off, and I don't have his permission to preach or teach. And listen, if it came from somebody like Robert Fa Breaker, I don't I want to say his name right, Robert Breaker, or Edward P.F., or anybody else, I'd have been like, who cares what they say? But when it's coming from a man that you know is wrong, but is still a mentor, an elder, uh, someone that you care about and respect, it hits hard. So part of me is like, okay, I am going to sit down and take some time, you know, just barely put out videos and check myself with the Lord and say, hey, am I really that far off? Or is his pride getting the better of him? Okay. So that's, that was another reason why I kind of took some time off from video games. Uh, video games. Someone just hit me up on the internet about video games and I was responding. Sorry about that. Uh, I took time off from putting videos out. And I was watching Bible studies. Uh, I got my big Bible. And I'm tired. That's also my brain's... I'm, I'm uphill now. we got to go uphill and um, I, had to, I, I got my big Bible. And remember I showed you the video about the Bible and the pencils, color pencils, and go through some Bible studies, highlighting the major doctrines, key scriptures, and instruction in righteousness and whatnot. So I've been spending time doing that. And uh, it's been tough trying to overcome that sickness. And I don't know if I ever got back to being at full strength and full health because... It didn't used to get me to walk up and down this <laughs> this this road like this. It wasn't hard, but it seems to be getting hard. So I am going uphill. So, but no, someone online accused me saying, you said that you were present tense playing video games and watching Hollywood movies, and how can you do that as a bishop and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, uh, if you actually watch the study I was talking about when I got saved, oops, up here, when I got saved, I was talking about how I fought the Lord and giving that stuff up. So it didn't get, I didn't give it up. And I've always preached that, even in my testimony. I didn't give it up right away. It was a year or two into being saved before I finally, God got me out of all that stuff. I really fought the Lord. I've been saved seven years now. Um, so that kind of got into it. And, I, and then other things around here, trying to get stuff done. And then winter hit. I remember winter time around here, we lose power. The internet runs super slow. And uh, I've lost power a couple times. We had one storm come through here and knock, oops, knock healthy trees, knock limbs out of healthy trees. There was a huge pine tr tree limb 
just laying in the middle of this road right here, which you can see behind me, just laying in the road. And I'm looking at it going, that's perfectly healthy. Why did that fall? <laughs> and I evidently have slept right through it, but talked to some of the neighbors. And it's like, yeah, I got so windy last night. A lot of trees, there were branches and trees, trees that were rotted that fell down, but some branches that were hitting between each other or something, just somehow it just was the right condition. And it just ripped leaves off, or huge. This wasn't just a small pine tree branch. It was a huge limb that went out a ways. Um, it just ripped it right off. So we get wind up here really bad during the winter. And we want rain more than anything. We want rain, 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 so I don't have to go through that big of a drought during the summer. But enough of me, you know. But the point is, is I've been busy, and I shouldn't have let a lot, any of that stuff get in the way. I'm trying to get back to preaching and teaching, and I took my time, as that brother suggested, and evaluated, and it's like, you know what? No, the brother in Christ is wrong, okay? And he's wrong for, for letting pride get the better of him. He's wrong for how he's treating the brethren, and uh, he'll have to answer for it, uh, either in this life or at the judgment seat of Christ. You'll have to answer for it, just as I have to answer for when I mistreat brethren. And I've made videos before apologizing when I've overstepped my bounds and uh, mistreated the brethren. Um, so I'm going to try to get back. I'm going to try to catch up on some of the studies that we had started a few months ago and try to finish them up. Um, and then, like I said, we started the uh, manhunt, which I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, Bible manhunt. Uh, so to get you guys back to the truth, that it's supposed to be about the truth. It's supposed to be about absolute truth. So, brother, I understand this month is Christmas, and you've got brethren that are vehemently trying to defend Christmas, and then you've got brethren that are vehemently standing for the Word of God and saying, I'm having nothing to do with Christmas. Amen. Praise the Lord to you, brethren out there. Um, but you still have a lot of people coming in trying to defend Christmas, and I'll be honest with you, I get called all kinds of names Anytime I mention Christmas and then I get, I get brethren, you know, that love the Lord, that love his word. They can handle the birth of Jesus Christ as it is in scripture. They don't have to add to it or subtract from it. They don't have to spice it up. But I get called and told that I'm a, I cause division because I stand for the, the birth of Jesus Christ as it is in the King James Bible. And the honest truth, honest God truth we might be doing some videos, but I wanted to get some of these old videos first done, and I didn't want to make videos where it just seems like I'm bitter or I'm lashing out. I just want it to be about the Word of God, about absolute truth, and, you know, and just remember that the whole point is I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a salesman. Brothers and sisters in Christ, anybody that's watching this that professes to be a brother and sister in Christ, I'm not a salesman. Do you want the truth? Or do you not want the truth? It's just that simple. You don't want the truth? There's nothing I can do for you. You want the truth? Then I'll give it to you. If I'm wrong, prove me through Scripture. This whole thing is be careful, real quick, a warning. Be careful about being distracted from the truth. It's not enough that they promote lies trying to justify Christmas. Sometimes they won't necessarily promote lies. They'll try to distract you from the truth. They'll have other truth over here that doesn't disprove this truth over here, but because they're right over here, it makes you think they're right over here. Be very careful about that. That's a good deception trick that Satan likes to pull. All right. But honestly, I'm not the one causing division. I'm not because they'll accuse me of causing division. When the number one person who causes division is someone who doesn't have a love of the truth and goes against the truth and tries to promote lies and fiction, fairy tales, they're the ones causing division. The other thing that you'll be accused of if you stand up against Christmas is you'll be accused of not loving the birth of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm sorry, brothers and sisters in Christ, that's a lie. That's a total lie from Satan. We who stand up against Christmas that are truly saved, born again, and have a love of the truth, I know there's wicked people out there. They'll use that as an excuse too, is that, that because they stand up against Christmas, because they have one thing right and everything else wrong, 
that, that one thing that's right has to be wrong because it comes from them. Uh, no. Us Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women who stand against Christmas because of its pagan origins and everything, proven fact, absolute truth, the, the practices that go along with Christmas, will be accused that we hate the birth of Jesus Christ. And I'll just say this to everyone who tries to use that against me. You're the one who hates the birth of Jesus Christ. You're the one who can't handle the birth of Jesus Christ as it is in Scripture. You've got to add to Scripture. You've got to pervert the Scriptures. The lowly, meek birth of Jesus Christ just isn't enough. We've got to throw in some Christmas trees. We've got to throw in some Christmas lights. We gotta throw in something that we have to make it more about us. So we gotta throw in gifts to we give to each other, and I get a gift and you get it. We gotta spice it up a little bit. We can't handle the scriptures as they are. You're the ones that hate the birth of Jesus Christ. It's that simple. There's nothing wrong with sitting there and going over the birth of Jesus Christ and remembering the birth of Jesus Christ any month, any day, any week of the year. But to do it and say you're doing it as part of Christmas, now you're in sin. Now you're in sin. When you start adopting the pagan practices of Christmas, now you're in sin. Now you've just shown you don't you hate the birth of Jesus Christ as it is. You can't handle absolute truth as it is. Now I've gone on my rant for too much. I didn't mean for this to be this long. But brother, we'll go over some videos. But I want to make it about love. I want to make it about trying to get us to unite. The Bible, I have verses galore where it talks about Paul's telling us, we, he's telling them, be of one mind. Strive together. Be of one mind. Be of one mind. Who's truly causing division in this month? Those who stand first. Or those who are against absolute truth. And we'll make, I'll make some videos showing it. It's just obvious. I've already said it here a little bit. You know, Christmas tree, where's that in the birth of Jesus Christ? Oh, we don't care. Then you don't love absolute truth. Why December 25th? Jesus wasn't born 20, December 25th. Oh, we know that, but who cares? Then you don't love absolute truth. You hate it. Christmas tree lights, gift giving, everybody giving each other gifts, wrapping gifts and putting it underneath the Christmas tree. Where's that at in the birth of Jesus Christ? Oh, we don't care. We don't care. You see what I'm saying? Brethren, you need to check yourself. Do you have a love of the truth? Are you about putting on all this, the fairy tales and the fantasy land and adding to the scriptures that have nothing to do with the birth of Jesus Christ? You know what? All those practices, it's not about Jesus Christ. It's about you. Getting ahead of myself. It's about you. And you know it. And, you're doing, and you feel guilty if you're truly saved. You've got the Holy Spirit in you that's convicting you and getting you to go, wait a minute, this is all about me. I'm doing it for me, 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 I, I, I. I'm not doing it for the Lord. And some of you have repented, but some of you are like, well, I don't care. I want my flesh. I want, it to be, I want it to be about me, 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 I, I, I. And you hold on to Christmas like it's life or death. And you don't care if it costs you fellowship with brethren. You don't care if it costs your walk with the Lord. It hinders your walk or even almost kills your walk with the Lord. You don't care if it hurts your ministry. You're going to hold on to something that's about me, myself, and I. So I do want to do some videos, but the reason I haven't really come out hardcore Bible study videos, I've already got some on Christmas, on Trin uh, Trin Trinity versus Godhead, but on Christmas, on, um, gosh, my brain freezes on some words sometimes. Uh, some people will say, well, we have liberty, we have liberty. No, you don't. That's not what liberty means. That's not what liberty is about. Paul says you're not to use liberty as an occasion to the flesh. So when someone says, I have liberty when it comes to sin, you know what? You're right. You do have liberty when it comes to sin. In other words, as a Christian, as a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman that's truly saved and born again, if you sin, you will not go to hell to burn for all eternity and tossed in the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. You have liberty. But Paul said himself, you're not supposed to use liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Just because you can sin and the ultimate consequences of sin has been paid for on the cross doesn't justify you continuing in your sin. That's why Paul said, are we to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? It's a sin issue, not a liberty issue. This whole Christmas thing is not a liberty issue. It's a sin issue. Okay? And you guys need to get that taken care of. 
What's more important, brothers and sisters of Christ, Christmas or fellowship with the brethren? I keep throwing this at you. What's more important, Christmas or your walk with the Lord? What's more important, a pagan holiday, Christmas, through and through? Or if you're a man in ministry, the ministry. What's more important? Some men have already made their choices. And this is not for them. They've made their choice. I'm not, a, I'm not a car salesman. You want the truth or you don't want the truth. I've got Christmas studies. I have liberty studies that haven't been disproven by any of the brethren that really attack me. It's just all they can attack me with is feelings and opinions. If you're truly a brother or sister in Christ and you want to contact me and you want to sit down and you want to talk and start hammering out what's truth, the truth from the fiction, okay, I'm here. I'm here. I'm not going to push you away like some brethren have. All right, you want to talk? I'm here. If you want to talk about truth, but my first question I'm ever going to ask you is, do you have a love of the truth? Not just acknowledging the truth. The lost world, you'll find a lot of them will acknowledge truth. But how do they treat that truth? That shows whether they love the truth or hate the truth. How do people that defend Christmas handle the absolute truth? Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. Christmas tree is not in the birth of Jesus Christ. So you have to find out where did the Christmas tree come from and the origins of the Christmas tree. Oh, we can't do that. Christmas tree lights, same with the thing. They're not in the birth of Jesus Christ. This is absolute truth. Giving each other gifts, wrapping gifts, putting them underneath the Christmas tree. That's not in the birth of Jesus Christ. This is absolute truth. You have that truth. Now here's the question. What do you do with that truth? No, oh, we don't care. We're going to continue doing the Christmas tree and, and the Christmas lights and, and anything else that has to do with Santa Claus. Because when you find out it doesn't have to do with Christmas, I mean Christmas, it doesn't, those practices have nothing to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. So then what do those practices have to do with? Santa Claus. Satan Claus. But, but we don't celebrate Santa Claus. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to rant like this. I'm sorry, brothers. I just get frustrated. That's why I've been holding off and making like Bible study videos because I don't want to come across just, you know, I'm just agitated by some brethren that I care about and love about. I mean, if, if it was, like I said, Edward P.F. who hates Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, he actually hates the King James Bible. He's a fake. He's a faker. Um, he's a deceiver pretending, you know, putting on a show. Same thing with uh, Robert Breaker and so those other ones, King's Table and everything that's online. If they were doing Christmas, they hate the truth to begin with. Let their blood, let their blood be upon their own heads. I am clean, as Paul said. <laughs> let their bloods be on their own heads. I am clean, Paul says. Um, and it's the same thing with us. Lost world doesn't want the truth. They don't want the truth. What really hurts and agitates us, brothers and sisters in Christ, as brothers and sisters in Christ, is because you see a brother and sister in Christ going astray. You see them heading for destruction, and you're trying to warn them, and they don't care. They don't care. And it still breaks your heart. Maybe if I say it this way, maybe, maybe if I say it that way. It's almost kind of like Paul with how he was with the Jews. He kept going back to them three times. I know there were different sets of Jews, but he said, okay, I'm done with the Jews completely. I'm only going to the Gentiles. He comes across this whole new set of Jews that never heard the gospel, and his heart yearns for them. I'm going to preach the gospel to you. Even though I said I wouldn't, I'm going to. And that's kind of the same attitude I'm having with some of the brethren. I'm like, I tell, I'm done, I'm done. But then I have that heartfelt love. And, and I just, I want you to have the truth. You're heading for destruction. You give Satan an inch, he'll take a mile. Okay? And that's what Christmas is. You're giving Satan more than an inch. But if you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. And his taking doesn't stop there. He's going to keep taking and taking. And he's going to mess you up as a Christian as he has messed up some of the brethren and some of the men in ministry over Christmas. Something so stupid as to hold on to something so pagan and think that that is more important than the brethren. That that's more important than your walk with the Lord. And that that's more important than being as effective in ministry as you once were. Okay, the Bible says that uh, at this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth every man everywhere to repent. And for instruction in righteousness, you might have been ignorant. You might have been worse doing something, whether it's Christmas or any other sin. You might have been doing something that you thought was okay, and you were just ignorant. But when God shows you the truth, that's when it gets to the point where God, at this ignorance, God winked at, because you were ignorant, but now commandeth every man everywhere to repent. Once you know the truth, you better repent. 
And a lot of you out there know the truth about Christmas. You better repent. You better get your life right. And it's just so irritating that brethren have turned their back on other brethren over Christmas. And I'm not talking about us who stand for absolute truth. I'm talking about those who hate absolute truth and prefer their lies and their fantasy Christmas over the brethren. It's a physical practice and a practice, physical things and practice that has no basis in Scripture. You see me doing anything that has no basis in Scripture and that's physical and it's a practice and it gets in the way of my walk with the brethren, it's gone. It's that simple. It's gone. Do you love the brethren? Oh yeah, I love the brethren, but I'm going to hold on to something knowing it causes division. It has no basis in Scripture and it causes division. Brethren, this whole month, there's going to be a lot of fighting going on back and forth between brethren that want to hold on to their flesh and hold on to me, myself, and I. And then brethren that are trying to show love. And I pray for those brethren that are trying to show love. That you don't get prideful. That you forget that you're talking to brothers and sisters in Christ. That you're trying to reach for the truth. And do it with love. Do it with humility. Try to be peaceful about it. You can be stern. Like I got in a couple times in this video. You can be stern. But remember you're doing it because you love them. You're not doing it out of hate. Or spite. Or anger. So, just a little walk and talk, kind of got off a little on that, but prayer for my for Victoria, prayer about my daughter, please, I'm just hoping that I can reach her, our relationships get to the point where we can talk again, and that I can reach her for the Lord. Um, like, like I said, I'm not a salesman, I'm not going to be cramming it down her throat, but you have to have an open door, or there's nothing you can do. God's got to open doors, so pray that God opens some doors that I can reach my daughter, and uh, just keep in touch with my daughter, and and just anytime there's an open door, keep trying to witness to her in these last days. Um, so grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your prayers. And like I said real quick, the brethren that I donate to, uh, get in contact with me if it's a serious thing. Like you really are hurting and you need donations to help out with the family and everything that I've been doing. Um, please contact me you know who you are uh, but this month's gonna be a tight month and maybe even next month so um, please bear with me uh, so grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in in Christ Jesus our Lord not the world not fantasy land not opium pipe dreams as, as, as a brother likes to say an opium pipe dream it's in Christ Jesus That's where my love for you is is in Christ Jesus it's about book uh, it's about truth, absolute truth. My love for you is in Christ Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. So I will see you in the next video. It will be sometime next week. we got a couple more videos. Uh, Bible, Man Hunt part, Bible Man Hunt Part 2. And we got to finish up our studies on God was manifest in the flesh. You know, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, uh, believed on in the world, and we're at the last part, received up into glory. And we're going to get to the received up in glory. And then I'll maybe have some time to really have some patience, calm down, and try to put together some studies to try to, once again, out of love, convince the brethren that have turned their back on the truth, because they're brethren going back and forth, that have turned their back on the truth to stand and hold fast to the truth. Stay away from Christmas. Stay away from holidays, period. Okay? They're not unto the Lord. You actually do the research and the history and the origins, the law first mentioned. They're not of the Lord. Okay, You're not doing it unto the Lord. It's all about lifting man up in worship of men or false gods. That's the two things that all the holidays have in common. And holidays and holy days are not the same thing. I've been called a liar for saying that. I'm going to stick to absolute truth. Words have meaning. Holiday is the, what the Bible chose to use, and it gave us the definition of holiday. Or holy day, I'm sorry. Holy day is what the Bible used, and it gave us the definition of holy day. God ordained, and it's unto the Lord. Holidays, they're not unto the Lord. So, please, brother, I'm doing this out of love. I need to get, I need to stop. I'm doing this out of love. So please, please, when you're talking with the brethren, and you're trying to hash out absolute truth, just remember, you're talking to a brother or sister in Christ. And you need to do it out of love. You can be stern. You can be, I'm going to have the attitude, I'm going to stand for absolute truth and I ain't budging for absolute truth. Absolutely. But you need to remember that it's, you're, it's a brother or sister in Christ. You know, 
If you're just going to yell at them and mock them and make fun of them and call them names and say they're liars and this and that, is that really going to open their mind to see the truth? No. That's just going to build, it's just going to have that pride that's already there. That shield's just going to get bigger and stronger. That wall's going to come up and there's nothing you can do. Okay, you've ruined your chance to witness to that person for absolute truth. So, please, in, these, in, these, uh, in this month and everything, just remember, we're, we're supposed to stand for the truth, preach the truth, make sure you're using Scripture and not misusing Scripture, but that you love one another as you're trying to correct them. Okay? So I'll say this for a third time, because it's the truth. Grace and peace. I want grace and peace among the brethren. I want us to be of one, one mind, striving together. But as long as you got people that hate the truth and mock the truth and just want their fleshly holidays or whatever sins that they try to justify, not just Christmas, but any sin, it's always going to cause division because those who stand for the truth say, hey, I can't have anything to do with that. Oh, you're causing division. No, you are by holding on to your sin. It's just that simple. So grace and peace, that's what I want. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.